Hello everyone, welcome back to ME1201 Computer Aided Design. This is a 3D modeling activity using Autodesk Inventor 2020 for figure 7 question 4E, the gear housing. So let's head over to our 2D orthographic drawing where you can find it on page 7-68. Okay, so this is the gear housing. We have the front view and a and sectional view so as usual we will remove any holes such as this diameter 32 this spot face hole this tiny diameter 3 hole any secondary features such as here oh uh, the m6 holes here uh, together with the boss itself let's remove that and also the rib there's also another secondary feature here which we should ignore first. So what's left is actually just this skeleton here. All right. So I will be performing a revolve tool for this component here, followed by another revolve tool for this secondary feature here at the top, and the third revolve tool for the hole here. Okay, so let's begin. Now, if you head over to our Autodesk Inventor 2020, this is the final product of your activity today. All right. Let's start. Go to Files. Click on New. Under Matrix folder, double click on Standard MM.IPT. Expand the origin folder by clicking the plus sign. Left click on the YZ plane. Press the shift key and click on the XY plane. Remove your shift key. Now right mouse click and click on visibility. We will start with the XY plane. Okay, click on it at the border of it and create new sketch. First, we need to have the axis of rotation so to achieve that i will actually project geometry this horizontal axis here or horizontal plane so click on project geometry select this horizontal axis right mouse click press ok to end our project geometry function now select the projected edge okay make sure it's selected correctly and then click on center line Take note, the line type changes to a solid line, solid continuous line to a center line type. Now we can start sketching. So go to lines. You begin with at this origin here, going up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And nine. Right mouse click, press OK. Let's check this end, make sure that it's uh, constrained properly to the center line. Okay, so go to the end point, left click and hold and drag it around. Okay, so it means this point itself is actually coincident to the line here. Okay, that's fine. Now Let's dimension all the diameters first. For this case, we have di diameter uh, 95, sorry. We have a thickness of 5 mm, and the backing here is also 5 mm, and the hub is diameter 48. Go to dimension tool, select this horizontal line to the center line. Take note, always select the lines to the horizontal line to get the diameter symbol out. 48. Press the tick key, makes this outer line to the center line, enter 95. It has a thickness of 5 mm. Okay, the backing here is also the same, 5 mm. So we will just click on the existing uh, 5 mm to, for it to automatically refer back to one another. Okay, next, 
we were applying the length of all the dimensions given. So we have uh, 55 from this edge all the way through to the other end. Then the small hub in the center is actually 33 with 36. Okay. So let's apply that first. Dimension from here it's 33. Okay, take note. Okay, when you apply that dimensions, everything goes haywire. So uh, please do not continue. Just we need to rectify it further first. Just drag the lines here and there so that uh, we obtain whatever we have originally sketched out. So right click, press OK to end our dimensioning tool or just press the escape key. Left click and drag the green lines. So here, drag it out and then try to analyze again. Okay, did we get the shape correct? Okay, for this time, yes, we somehow got back to our original sketch that we had. Now, go back to your dimensioning tool. Select from this edge to the inner hub here, it's 36. And the full length here is actually 55. Okay. Now every lines are fully constrained, we can click on the finish sketch and click on revolve tool. Okay. Once we have seen the, uh, the preview and we are happy with it, press OK. Next, we will do this uh, secondary feature here at the top. Okay. Diameter 50 by 12, diameter 25 to the diameter 95 here and the full height of this end till the center of the hub it's 105 so I will begin from this XY plane again create a new sketch okay I will be using revolve tool again so means I just need to sketch half of it press F7 to slice the graphics in your window Now select rectangle, from here make sure do not click on the midpoint, do not select the green dot, just trace a little bit to the left or right and then we can begin our sketching. Right click, press OK, now click on one of the lines here, one of the vertical lines and convert it to center line, okay because as you know we need to have diameter 50 and diameter 25. All those to present it in diameter symbol, we need them with the center line here. Click on dimension, select this edge to here, and this is 50 mm. From the inner one, the smaller diameter is 25. The diameter 50 has a thickness of 12. And the end here to the center of the hub is 105. And we have from center here to here at 30 mm. And everything is fully sketched. Now let's finish our sketch and click on the revolve tool. Select the two rectangles. Now click on axis. And since we have already set our center line, Inventor automatically select that center line as the axis of rotation. Once we are happy with it, we can press OK. Just take note, when we were sketching out, instead of ending our sketch, our rectangle, or starting from here, we actually started from the smaller uh, diameter hole. So what it does is, if, if you see, when we revolve, use the revolve tool, there's this little gap that is empty at the bottom here. So imagine if we started at the top here, there will be a small gap at here and here. And this, no matter how small it is, the gap, it will actually cause issues as we go on uh, further in our modeling. Uh, such as when you are adding fillet, instead of it going outwards, okay, the fillet will actually be created inwards into the solid body that, that's incorrect all right so take note of uh, all this especially when we are creating features on a curvature 
So everything looks fine. After checking is done, press OK. We will now create the holes inside. The holes have a diameter 25 with a 3 mm depth and a diameter 11 that is true all until here. Now click on the XY plane again and create a new sketch. Press F7 to slice it. We will start with a two point rectangle. We will begin now this time using the midpoint of the diameter 50 feature. So here the midpoint represented by the green dot, left click once and we will repeat again all the way this time to the hub itself. So we go get it projected and then right click press OK. Uh, the method here is similar to the method beforehand. We need to convert one of the vertical lines as our center line since we need the diameter symbol in our 25 and 11. Next, click on dimension tools here to center line. It's 25. From here till center line, it's 11 with a thickness of 3 mm. And this time, everything looks okay, all black. Let's click on finish sketch and click on revolve tool again. Now, if you notice, you can't see the sketch because the body is fully solid. So there's two methods to go about. Uh, the one that I prefer, I will just, uh, since I know, somehow roughly estimate where are the sketches are, I'll just move my cursor and try to get something uh, highlighted, like in this case now. So if you see here, if you are lucky enough or smart at your estimation, you can actually try to figure out where are the sketches. Okay, for those that are not so comfortable with this method, you can go to View, Tab, under Visual Style, change it to Wireframe. And with that, you can actually see your sketch uh, very easily. Okay, so we'll click on one of the sketch and two sketches or two profiles. Now, instead of clicking on this uh, box, selection box, you can also right mouse click and click on Continue. Okay, what it means is just moving to the next selection box. Okay, so center line has been selected. We would like to remove material, so we select the cut boolean. Okay, since we don't uh, really need everything to be in wireframe anymore. So under view tab, click on the visual style and let's go back to our original shaded with H. Okay, with this, we can actually see whether is it adding material or removing material. So, we would like to remove it, therefore we can press OK. Let's rotate and check our design. Everything looks good. Next will be our M6 tap hole. Okay, This M6 tap hole is actually about the a PCD of diameter 95, okay, similar to this outer here. If you can see they are traced together. All right. There's also a small boss of R8 here. Okay, small feature here. And that feature is actually rotated or circularly patterned about the center here by three times. So we begin from this feature here. Okay, click on the face and create a new sketch. This time we will need this vertical line or vertical axis to be projected. So click on project geometry and select the vertical axis. Next, click on the circle. Okay, we will use the edge of this circular piece at the vertical line to create this intersection. You will see that there's a cross there. Okay, there's none, there's none. When we move closer, there's actually a cross. That means it's uh, is the intersection point between the diameter 95 and the vertical axis here. So left click once and then we'll click once more and this time we will tri trim the backing here. So go to your trimming tool and left click hold on to it to drag it up. Right, right click, press OK. 
let's convert this vertical line to construction line at our dimensions here will be 8 and from your drawing we will extrude this piece by 15 so go on the 3d model tab click on extrude tool select the profile okay let's rotate our view okay our uh, our extrude direction is actually incorrect we need to flip it and for the thickness or depth of it is actually 15 that's okay next we will create the m6 hole so click on hole tool select the starting face and now select a cylindrical reference to centralize the center of the hole with this uh, reference change to tap hole with no seating the type is isometric matrix profile uh, the size is 6 the destination class and direction let's ignore this first okay and then the full depth here please leave it untick okay because we would like to have a different depths for the tapping and for the blind hole so the tap hole is actually 10 mm depth uh, deep with the uh, clearance hole or the blind hole at 12 mm deep okay once done make sure the drill point is pointed and press ok let's check again everything looks fine we will now pattern these two features about the center here so click on circular pattern select the features either from the graphical window or you can also go into the model browser and click on it right mouse click continue select a cylindrical reference which is here the axis under placement we will change the quantity to 3 and the angle we leave it at 360 because it's a full rotation or full patterning angle cool we somehow got it next we will now prepare for this shape here Okay, this shape here, if we are looking from top down, we will see a semicircle with a rectangular feature here. Alright, so let's start. I will start with offsetting this plane upwards by 56 mm. So click on plane, go to this horizontal axis here. Or horizontal plane left click hold on to it and drag it up and enter here 56 press tick we will click on this newly created plane and create a new sketch you can now press f7 key to slice it okay next I will draw a horizontal line to act as a reference about this uh, feature here so click on line let's try to get the center line but this time it's not possible it's okay we can use project geometry and project that circular feature first since it's not possible with, uh, to get any center you can undo it first press f7 to undo your slice uh, slicing method and now we can project geometry again and press F7 if you notice the difference between the first time when I project geometry and the second one when I selected the top feature or the top face the difference is actually the center point has been shown when I select uh, project geometry from the face itself the, 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 the reason is because the first time this edge here exists on a circular feature here therefore it's just in a 3d form uh edge okay that's why there's no center to it while for this fellow here they are in a common 2d face that's why when we project it the center will also follow together under the view cube let's click on to the top view so that we can see directly to it now click on line 
let's go from here this way right click press ok if you notice my line is actually uh, not horizontally placed okay just go to your constraint here select the horizontal plane uh, horizontal constraint let's check the trailing line you see the trailing line is actually pointed vertically okay in this case just swap it over with the vertical constraint and if you see the trailing line again this time even though it's a vertical constraint it shows as a horizontally applied uh, constraint so left click now we can add circles let's repeat again click on circle make sure there's uh, the green dot and we can click on rectangle from here to here left click press ok i will convert this as a construction line now let's add the dimensions and the dimension here this width is actually 20 okay you notice it gets uh it's not fully constrained properly so this line to this curvature we will use tangent constraint this line to this curvature right click press ok to end it and from center to the center of this is actually 32 so dimensions from here to here it's 32 right click press ok let's check why is it still moving about okay if you can see this line here horizontal line is also not tangent to this uh, circle so let's apply tangent constraint from here till here and now we have all the sketches fully constrained because it's shown in black finish your sketch let's extrude select the sketch okay and this time we would like to flip the direction of extrusion with this function two next if you can see two next function actually goes all the way through okay we do not want this so let's swap it over to two and click on this exterior diameter 95 surface okay so that's the difference it doesn't go through all the way so press ok all right we are somewhat finishing it okay we are lacking this diameter 3 hole a bigger diameter 32 hole here a web or a rib here and yeah most of the fillets all over so let's finish all the holes first because this, those are easy and then we will start to conquer the rib and lastly we apply all the fillets here and there now let's start with the diameter 3 holes so click on here select this face as your starting surface and select this curvature as your cylindrical reference change the hole type to normal simple hole with no seating now uh, the thickness is uh, i mean the hole diameter is three the depth we will change it to this area and when and now we can press okay okay let's check it doesn't go through all the way through yeah that's fine let's move on to our diameter 32 same method as your diameter 3 face and then select the curvature to have a concentric uh, uh, application here this time we will swap over the termination to true all and the diameter we will swap it for 32 and press ok cool we have most of our holes done or all the holes done so what's left is actually let's do the rib okay click on the xy plane create new sketch press the f7 key click on line select here till here and dimension it from here to the beginning here and enter 20. right click press ok we will highlight all the lines that is not used during the drawing of this profile we will convert it to construction line so right click and click on construction click on finish sketch select the rip tool under the 3d model so the profile has been selected if it's not just select your profile that you have just drawn 
select parameters to sketch plane and you can see that I have some materials done. Let's swap this thickness to 5mm and press OK. Right, so since it's done, let's apply the fillet. So this fillet here has a, a radius of R3, okay, as specified in your drawing. Okay, everything is R3 except this R8 here. Okay, so only there's one with a R8. The others are all R3. So let's conquer that R8 first uh, before we forgot. So click on fillet to select this edge and convert the radius value to 8mm. Now, like I've mentioned before, we always fillet uh, all your items group by group. So if you are filleting this vertical edge of the web, we will do all the vertical edges of the web only. So click on fillet, select this edge, the other edge, here and here. And we will change this radius value to 3mm. Press OK. Now, click on fillet tool again. Select this edge. As you can see, because of the first time that we did uh, uh, applying the fillet as a family, upon clicking this edge, everything gets highlighted all the way through. Okay, That's the beauty about it. So this edge and the behind here. Press OK. Okay. Next, let's see the web here. The web, everything is curved, curve, curve, curve. The top here of the web is also filleted. So we need to add this to fillet now. Go to fillet tool, select this edge here and here, and press OK. For the top here, we have one, two, and three. Now, if we zoom in a little bit, you will notice that this edge here is actually a thin line rather than a thick outline as shown on the other views. Okay, so when you see this kind of thin line represented inside your drawing, okay, this means that there's a tangent edge about that area there. Okay, it means that this surface here and this diameter 25 surface here they are actually joined together with a fillet so what i mean by that if you see here this is the surface i was talking about and the diameter 25 hole right, the diameter 25 uh, feature here okay there's nothing here it means this line will be a solid outline to convert it into a tangent line we need to just add fillet here and the opposite side and press OK. So with that, when we represent this feature here as a drawing or orthographic drawing, you will see it as a tangent outline rather than a solid thick outline. Let's add other features here. One, two, three, and one more here. Four. And press OK. Cool. What's left is actually our small pieces here. Okay, again, we will do it group by group. I will actually constrain, uh, not constrain, fill it all these edges first, and then we will move on from there. So click on fill it to select this edge one, two, three, four. 5, 6, and press OK. Next, I will fill it again. Here, 1, 2, 3, press OK. Fill it again. 1, 2, 3, press OK. Let's double check our design. Okay, the fillet done. All the fillets are done. 
rotate our view we have the fillet here all the way through even our rib here or web here has holes or not not holes have fillets there and our m6 uh, pieces or features here also have fillet about it all right with that we have completed our design that's all happy trying